But I want to move on because there's another event that is going to lead to once again people fear mongering. And that, viewers, is the story that we're going to focus on now. It is official. The NDA will table a bill to amend the Wakaf Act of 1995 tomorrow. The decision has been taken in the wider interest of ensuring true secularism and equality between communities. It is also deemed necessary to curb the powers of the Wakaf to grab land in the pretext of freedom of religion. Here are the proposed amendments. Uh, collectors to carry out preliminary survey in place of survey commissioners. Very important. So decentralization of power. Central Waf Council to also include three MPs of which two will be from the Lok Sabha, the Wakaf Council to have two Muslim members, non-Muslim members. Uh, it will have, the boards will also ensure representation of women and non-Muslims. So make it a slightly more holistic apparatus. Separate board of Okaf to be established for uh, Bohras and Aga Khanis. Uh, board to have representation of Shia, Sunni, Bora, Aga Khanis and OBCs among Muslims to make it more representative and I and I want to ask a fundamental question because from tomorrow onwards viewers there's going to be a massive controversy where people will say that this is being done to undermine Muslim interests is this true let me bring in the expert counsel of uh, Vishnu Shankar Jain who has been somebody who has been pressing for these reforms is this amendment good in law Mr. Jain See, according to me, this amendment is going as per the tenets of Islamic law. And the most important amendment which is happening is in section 3R of the Waf Act 1995. Now, what are what is the Islamic law so far as the Waf definition is concerned? The Islamic law is that you can create any property as Waf property if it is of your own ownership, if you have acquired it within your own lifetime. And if it belongs to your own ownership, a neat and clean property that can only be dedicated to Allah. Now, this definition was manipulated by the previous governments and Section 3R was introduced, which was against the basic Islamic tenets. So today that definition, I, I believe, is going to be amended and will be amended. The other most important and crucial part is Rahul. Section 3R of the WAF Act had developed the concept WAF by user. So if you don't have any deed of dedication, if you don't have any papers, you used to say or there was a claim that a particular property is used as verb by user. And it is not just a theory. We have seen it in Bangalore Eidga Maidan case where an entire Maidan was uh, said that it was being used as verb by user. So that portion is going to be omitted or deleted is what I believe. And this is a very, very crucial amendment. Apart from that, under Section 6, the most crucial part is that the decision of WAF tribunal is final. That words have been omitted. I believe it's a, a very important amendment because then you have been given a right to appeal before the High Court, which is a fundamental right, which is very, very crucial. Apart from that, the most draconian section in this WAF Act 1995, Rahul, is Section 40. And I believe and I hope that Section 40 is getting omitted and repealed completely. It is going to be scrapped. Which, are, which is a very, very important development. Apart from that, as I have always told you, that in the WAF tribunal, out of three judges, one judge has to be, a, uh, the qualification is that he must be an Islamic law scholar. That qualification has been deleted. I think now the WAF tribunal will comprise of two individuals from state government and the uh, state uh, judicial service, which is a very, very important amendment. Apart from that, section 101, the criteria of public servant has been amended. And section 107, which is very, very crucial, okay. 107 gives them the exemption from Limitation Act 1963. That has been completely deleted and omitted. Okay. And section 108, where the properties which were under the control of central government, administration of evacue properties act, that were given to the WAP board has been also omitted is what I believe. Okay. So these are very crucial amendments. And I think and I hope that this will keep a check on the WAP powers and the WAP board okay. as Dr. Ranganathan, the opposition is fear-mongering, saying this is uh, we're going to reduce uh, Muslims to second-class status. <laughs> well, they will still be six classes uh, over and above the Hindus, who I believe are the eighth-class citizens of this country. And the Waf Act is one of the eight reasons why Hindus are eighth-class citizens. I uh, revere Vishnu Jayanji and Hari Jayanji, and it is because of their untiring efforts that we have led this country to this situation where we are even talking about this. 
but may i slightly disagree uh, we don't need amendments in this waqf act the waqf act needs to be abrogated do hindus have a similar act for their properties do christians have a similar act where is the need when you have laws governing properties their sale and purchase their donation for charity or otherwise why on earth do you need another act to ratify that so if india is to be prevented from becoming an islamic republic we don't just need to amend the waqf act i'm sorry we need to abrogate it this is where i believe that we have given in the reason for appeasement we have now added discrimination against the people who are not muslims and that is plain wrong let me run you through a few sections will will give you the extent of draconian nature of this act and i don't know whether those actions those uh, sections will be changed by this amendments so the whole act needs to be abrogated because section 28 gives the waqf act the power to order a collector section 8 says the act the state has to pay for the waqf survey this is not in direct violation i ask you of article 27 of our constitution that says no person shall be compelled to pay any taxes the proceeds of which are specifically appropriated in payment of expenses for the promotion or maintenance of any particular religion or religious denomination section 40 says the waqf board can declare any property as waqf property and if it is a property that was held by a trust Yep. the board needs to notify the registrar who may or may not notify the trust what is going on section 107 says this act is not limited by the statute or limitation i mean this is draconian par excellence so i am afraid i disagree i i welcome that the government and other people are at least knowing about this act but i am afraid amendment is not enough this has to be abrogated every citizen of this country must be brought under one principle or rule of law that governs purchase or sale or donation of property period well viewers you've heard two informed opinions on the waqf act tomorrow of course a landmark amendment is going to be introduced in parliament we'll of course be covering it wall to wall there'll be a lot of animated debate we are being told that a series of amendments are going to be moved and i've already gone through at least seven or eight of them with you to bring you up to speed Uh, we'll have, of course, uh, Vishnu Shankar Jain back tomorrow because uh, the opposition's attack will be sharper, and I like to get his views on providing rebuttals. Uh, we leave it at this, viewers. Anand Narsimhan with the right stand coming up in just a few moments.